Hello, e-discovery enthusiasts. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is the second video in the deduplication series. If you haven't watched the first one, I highly recommend you do that before watching this one. Thank you. In order to implement deduplication, the first step is to identify duplicate copies of a given document. But how do we know if two documents are identical to each other? What makes a document unique? Let's take a live scenario. If you have ever watched any crime investigation, be it in movies, TV shows, the first thing that an investigation team does is to look for any potential fingerprints. If they find one, they will try to match that with their existing database to find any matches against any existing culprits. Um, that's not right. Anyways, you get the point. Fingerprint is considered as one of the most reliable, unique identifier of a person. It is said even identical twins do not share the same fingerprint. If we can create a digital fingerprint of an electronic document, can we call it as a unique identifier? The answer is yes, we can. The process of generating a unique identifier for an electronic document is called hashing. The functionality of hashing is very simple and straightforward. It contains three components, a function, an input and an output. The function will execute an algorithm that would read the contents provided in the input and transform them into a compressed version called digest. This digest is also called a hash. Interestingly, the most popular use case scenario of hashing is data security and integrity. Let's say John would like to send an important digital file to Tom, but he would like to make sure Tom receives the exact message and nothing has been lost during the transition. And this is when hashing come in handy. Before sending over the digital file, John can use the hashing function and create a hash, which would be the compressed version of his actual digital file. So in addition to the digital file, if John can share the hash value and the algorithm function details, then Tom can regenerate the hash value for the received file using the algorithm details shared by John. And he can then compare his hash value with the one that was sent by John. If the hashes match, it proves that Tom received the exact copy that was sent by John. Wow, there we go. This proves hash can be treated as a legitimate unique identifier of a document because hash is generated based on the contents within the document. As long as the content is intact, the hash would never change. Now we know what makes a document unique and how can we create unique identifier for each document. However, we often do encounter scenarios where two identical documents do not share same hash value. We will discuss the reasons behind this scenario and also how processing tools generate hash value for different document types in our next video. And now it's time for me to sign off. Until I see you again, please take care and stay healthy. Happy learning.